Hello my friends, today we will finally take a look at the Sony a7 Mark III. This camera is proclaimed to be the best thing since the invention of the sliced bread and in this video I would like to share with you my experiences with a7 III after the first few days of using. I will make the full review next week and then the comparisons with Sony a6500 and Panasonic G9. I will also make reviews of Sony FE 28mm f2, the 28-70mm kit lens and the Tamron 28-75mm f2.8. So in terms of the build quality, I think that the a7 Mark III is very well built. It uses the same body as Sony a7R Mark III, so it is the new style with bigger battery and two SD card slots. The camera feels very solid and actually very premium. I like the simple design, the finishing and the materials as well. It definitely feels like it can withstand many years of active use. I have heard some DSLR users complained about the red link inside of the camera. This is of course caused by the in-body image stabilization and it stops once you turn the camera on. The grip is very well shaped in my opinion, it is deep enough, so I appreciate that as well. In terms of handling, I can already say that the a7 III is huge improvement over my other Sony camera, which is the a6500. Overall, I can say that I do like the handling of a7 Mark III, but it is still far from perfect or far from Panasonic G9, which is in my opinion the best handling camera right now. a7 Mark III has some very nice features though, the joystick is definitely worth mentioning, it is useful for moving the focus point, if you press it down it will reset the position of the focus point to the middle of the frame and it is also capable of diagonal movements, so big thumbs up for the joystick. The second huge improvement is the implementation of my menu where you can put your most frequently used settings and since some very important settings are dug very deep in Sony menu, my menu makes a huge difference. There are three dials on the camera plus exposure compensation dial and the mode dial of course. Honestly, I really wish the drive mode dial from the A9 was here, but A7 III and A7 R3 unfortunately have to make do without it. Overall, there are 12 customizable buttons on the A7 III, which is quite sufficient. Fortunately, the screen does not dim when shooting 4K video, and I think that it is sufficiently bright with sunny weather setting, so it is very usable outdoors. The biggest strengths of the a7 III are definitely the sensor and the autofocus. 24 megapixel sensor in a7 III is completely new and it is backside illuminated. 24 megapixels is in my opinion the perfect resolution for the hybrid camera, I will explain why in the full review, but I can already say that the dynamic range and high ISO capabilities of the sensor are nothing short of amazing. The dynamic range is excellent, according to the tests it can capture 15 stops of dynamic range and I can really say that the highlights and shadows recovery on the a7 III looks like 3 or 5 step bracketing on other cameras, so with a7 III you have all the flexibility in post that you ever asked for. In terms of ISO performance, up to ISO 1600 the image is completely clean, ISO 3200 is still very clean, absolutely usable. 1600 is still more than usable for a majority of publishing platforms and even prints. ISO 12800 is in my opinion still usable and it is not an emergency option, it still looks very good. At ISO 25600 the noise is apparent, but with some noise reduction it is usable. ISO 51200 is still available, but the noise is quite visible here and this is in case of emergency option only in HDR scene like this one. What is also pretty amazing is that the dynamic range is still very good at higher ISO values. Highlight shadows recovery at 6400 is not a problem and even at ISO 12800 you can recover a lot of information. The color science on a7 III seems to be improved as well. I have to say that I really like the colors from a7 III. There is no unnatural tint, the green looks fine and so far I didn't need to change colors in post except for global saturation, vibrance and color temperature settings. a7 III uses the same autofocus system as the a9, which means that it has those 693 phase detection points and 425 contrast detection points and it also means that the autofocus on this camera is great. It is extremely fast and extremely reliable in both stills and video. 
The tracking capabilities are absolutely excellent and you also have options to change the responsiveness and the speed of autofocus drive. And there are actually big differences between the settings. So if you want it to be as smooth as the dual pixel AF, you shouldn't use the fast drive speed setting. The autofocus is also excellent in low light. The A7 Mark III is equally optimized for both stills and video. Some advanced features like 4K 60p or 10-bit video recording are not here, but the video from A7 III is still great. The sharpness is class-leading since it is 6K video downscaled to 4K. The dynamic range is excellent, so are the colors. And the big strength are Sony's color profiles. My favorite setting, which is the picture profile 8 with gamma change to Cine 4, works great for color grading, so no complaints here either. Regarding the rolling shutter, it seems to be better than on A6500. It is still there though, and I will do more testing for the full review. A7 Mark III does have in-body image stabilization. It certainly helps with handheld footage. But I have to say that it is definitely not the biggest strength of this camera, which is to be expected since the large full frame sensor is more difficult to move around. It is sufficient for panning or holding the camera still, but it can't smooth out walking. It can work together with stabilized Sony lenses, so using OSS lens will help as well. After the first couple of days of using the A7 Mark III, it seems like the hype was very real. I do like the overall package. The sensor and autofocus are the two biggest strengths of this camera. The build quality is also great, the handling is not bad, and the viewfinder is okay too. I can also already say that it is not perfect, the in-body image stabilization is average, the menu system without touchscreen functionality feels ancient in 2018, there is still a bit of rolling shutter left, and regarding the battery life, I use the sunny weather display brightness setting, but so far I haven't found the battery life to be as good as the reviewers claimed, so these are the things that I will look at in the full review and other videos about this camera. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you found it to be useful, stay tuned for the full review and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down. If you would like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.